Hey guys, this video marks the beginning of an exciting series in which I'll be sharing some uh, important knowledge which I have gained in the last two years by uh, training my friends and students from across the state uh, with their option entry process in order to secure a seat in their dream college and uh, I'll be talking about each and everything in detail in the coming videos in this series and to start off with I'll be talking about the basic structure of your option entry list about how your option entry list should actually look like and moving on we can improvise on things such as uh, the college is based on your rank and many exciting things like that. One thing you can be absolutely sure of is the fact that you will be in a position to give the best option entry uh, for your particular rank and that is the guarantee which I'll be providing for you and with that note let's start this exciting video guys. As a KCET aspirant myself back in 2022 I know how challenging it is to just segregate the top colleges especially based on your rank. So you guys are fortunate enough cause college those through its whatsapp bot is providing you uh, top colleges or top engineering colleges list for absolutely free of cost so make sure that you make the most out of it by just clicking the link which I have given in the description so that you need not uh, take that additional stress of finding out which the important colleges are or what are the top engineering colleges in and around you so that is there and with that note let's start this video guys yeah it's common to have a lot of doubts in your mind about how your option entry list should look like let me tell you some of the frequently uh, asked questions in terms of your option entry list should we only be uh, entering the options or entering the colleges and courses which will be accessible by our rank or which will be which can be affordable with our rank which we have predicted example yeah i'll tell you uh, suppose i have uh, got around 10k rank in my kct examination and there are certain colleges and courses which are uh, coming under this uh, range of 10k based on the previous two to three years cut off so the question is about should I be only putting these colleges and courses in my option entry list? Is that the right way? Okay, is it is a way but the question which should arise in your mind is whether it is the right way to do or uh, is it the way to maximize your uh, option entry submission? I don't think so. And now the question arises in your mind about what is the best way to provide your option entry? Because now I am telling you that okay keeping the options which are affordable by your rank in your option entry list is well and good but there is something more to it now what is that something more to it which makes your option entry list look more beautiful and more enhanced and that is the main agenda of this video guys so uh, talking about a basic skeleton of your option entry list which i would recommend and i have been recommending students from the last two years it should include three particular sections. Yes, listen to me carefully. Make a note of it in your mind or in a paper at least because this is certainly important. Yeah, uh, talking about the three sections, the first section should be the colleges which may not be affordable to your rank. Uh, let me tell you with an example. Suppose I scored a rank of around 2200 or 2300 something in my KCT examination. I know CS in RVCE is not affordable to my rank for my category in the last two to three years cutoff which has been officially released in the KEA website. Okay, now I have had a decent look uh, over the cutoff in the last two years and I know that I won't be getting RVCE CS for my particular rank. But should I include it uh, in my option entry list or not? That is the question and uh, the first section is the answer for your question about this. Yes, these are the kind of options which you should be entering in your first section. It's completely fine if they won't get allotted and you should keep in mind the fact that won't affect the allotment of the seats which your rank can afford or the options which your rank can afford which you have kept in the next section. So uh, I hope you know how the option entry software works and I have uploaded a detailed video on how things work and what is the basis of allotting seats for you and I have given the link also in the description so make sure that you check it out before watching this video so that you have a clear idea of how the software works and once you understand how the software works you will be in a position to narrate uh, the best option entry list yourself and that is the reason 
why I always suggest people to understand the process well before involving in it. Yes, this uh, applies to your life too. And uh, yeah, let's come back to what we were discussing. The first section should be including options which even your rank may not afford for. Now, uh, A, the question is about uh, why should we do it and B, will that affect our uh, option entry process or uh, keeping those things in the top, I may miss out on the colleges which or the options which I can afford with my rank. So, I'll answer both questions now. Yeah, first things first, why should we do it? To answer this question, again, you need a clear knowledge of how the software works. And in brief, let me tell you that the software iterates over your options one by one from the top. Okay, now you are you have kept certain options as your top five in the option entry list. Okay, the software checks for first option. Is it allotable for your rank? Under all the circumstances which are influenced by the option entry given by the students surrounding you or the students who have given their KCT examination and then it checks if it can allot that particular option to you and if not, it goes to the next uh, option and this uh, loop continues until an option gets allotted to you. So uh, this is a brief idea, but yeah, uh, talking about why those colleges at the first uh, section of your option entry list. There are some rare chances in case students in your pool haven't applied for that option in their option entry list for you to get allotted for that particular uh, college or for that option in terms of your category too. When there is a chance and when there is nothing to lose, just go for it. And uh, that is the reason why I am suggesting you to keep certain options which you can even not afford with your rank above so that luck can take over. And my answer to your second question about whether it will impact your option entry process for the uh, affordable uh, options below and the lower options below. Let me tell you the answer is a big no because the software works iteratively and uh, whether or not the option gets allotted in your first section, it will obviously come to the second section with the same uh, flow and I don't think that will affect your option entry in terms of colleges or the options which you can afford with your rank. With that, we are enhancing our 1% chance or 0.1% chance of getting a college above our uh, thing based on the options which has been applied by your peers out there and your category a lot of things get influenced over there but still yeah and the second section now is important this is really important i know you guys would have made the minimum amount of research now about your predicted rank suppose you are expecting your rank to be somewhere around that 70000 to 80000 mark and by now you would have a certain list ready with some amount of colleges and some uh, courses in front of you which are affordable by your rank based on the cutoff of previous years. Yes, this is the second section which I'm talking about and these colleges and options will be coming in your second section. And the third section is uh, often missed out by students and this is really important guys. I've seen in certain circumstances that cutoff uh, is really unexpected and people miss out on certain colleges which they think is affordable for their particular rank. But if in case it doesn't happen, we are not in a position to take risks cause this is something which happens only once and we don't have a plan B or a second chance or something like that. Yes, there are rounds, but I'm not talking about it. I hope you understand the context of what I am trying to tell you and the seriousness of the uh, situation right now. So in order to make sure that we are secure enough to get a seat uh, through this option entry process, I would suggest you to just add some colleges which are even below your rank range as a third section. Now again, A, why should we uh, do it and B, whether it will impact our option entry process. The first question, I hope I have answered your question now itself and second query is about whether it will impact your option entry process. Yes, as I told you uh, earlier about the, the how the software works, the iterative process takes place and it only reaches the third section if in case no college or no option has been allotted in your second section. Yeah, this is something which you should be keeping in mind and uh, if some college gets allotted in your first section or your second section, then the software doesn't look at the third section at all. And that should uh, speak volumes about uh, the zero impact which this additional uh, third section has on your uh, option entry if in case you are eligible to get a seat or get 
an option allotted which belongs to the first section or the second section so i hope i cleared uh, all your doubts about the three sections i am telling you to just figure out the basic structure in your mind about dividing your option entry list into three sections and making sure that you are putting things in the right slots and doing it is really important and the one of the main reasons why i uploaded this video way before the option entry link was released is to give you some time or give you some space in order to get ready for this option entry process and i hope i made justice to what i had uh, thought of uh, telling you guys about your option entry process now and in this series we'll be continuously discussing on topics uh, like these in the coming future so we'll be talking about your counseling process option entry colleges and what not we'll be talking about a lot of things so make sure that you subscribe to my channel to never miss out any uh, new video i upload about this particular thing and uh, as i have promised before i'll be with you throughout the entire uh, counseling journey and uh, i have been a part of it in the last two years for a lot of students out there and, and with that experience comes a lot of knowledge about how this algorithm works and a lot of things there so i want all of you to make the most out of that out of that knowledge which i have gained and uh, everything being free of cost i don't think there is something which is stopping you from getting that knowledge so your examination carries only half the weightage and half the weightage lies in your counseling process there are students who have uh, messed up in their examination and uh, done some things right or some things differently in their option entry process which have given them excellent results ultimately in terms of their uh, branch and in terms of their college so i want all of you to just belong to that category so that you are future will be as bright as you are and if you are uh, worried about uh, the colleges which come under your rank range or the top colleges in and around you then make sure that you just check out the whatsapp chat bot by college those which is absolutely free so that you will be getting a clear knowledge and a clear path on how to choose your colleges or branches guys with that note this is the shangoda signing off and we are brothers together thank you guys we'll meet in the next video bye